Welcome to Mummy Meltdown. Episode one's called Welcome to the Chaos. And we're really familiar with that. Myself and Jody. Jody Ricci joins me in studio today. Jody is a fellow mom who has been on the front lines and uh, knows all about Mommy Meltdowns and also comes at this from a mental health perspective as a professional. Jody, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Um, it's interesting because you know, we've known each other sort of at an arm's length, I guess we can say because my husband knows you quite well but I like that we can connect on a more personal level as moms who have children with special needs and mental health needs now um, you have two daughters yes tell us about the girls okay um, I have two daughters like you mentioned Um, my oldest daughter is Stephanie and uh, I like a good name she's doing well (laughs) she's now 22 and then my youngest daughter, Bailey, is 20. Okay. Um, Stephanie is my one that's been a bit challenging through okay. the years. Yeah. Um, diagnosed with Tourette syndrome and umbrella and many other diagnoses underneath that, um, such as ADHD, OCD, ODD, panic disorder, very severe separation anxiety. Thank goodness she outgrew that. <laughs> <laughs> so there is a light. I'm, I'm liking this. This is good. This is good. Um, and then my youngest daughter uh, was diagnosed with CAPS. Okay. It's interesting because you say the girls are in their 20s now. And I often think to myself, like I'm early, I guess you could say in the mm-hmm. process, you know, my kids are, um, James is almost 11 and Matthew's eight. And it's not been easy getting an, uh, an accurate diagnosis and a full diagnosis. Did you find that was the case when you started this process with the girls? I think when we kind of spoke briefly yesterday, I was explaining my my journey with my oldest daughter um, was a lot of denial. Um, I kind of knew from when she was little there was something different about her. Couldn't really put my finger on it. She was a very spirited uh, child. I like I that. I, liked, I like how you say that, <laughs> spirited. Exactly. Um you know, awesome personality, but very opinionated ever since she was like two, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, medical things came along the way, natural things, you know, tonsils and, and those kind of things. Yeah. So um, a lot of the sounds and stuff that she was doing early on, we could kind of justify them because of other things, um, surgeries and that that came up. And then um, when she got to be 11, it was pretty... Um, like I was listening and looking at her and thinking she has Tourette syndrome, like hundred percent. Okay. Um, I was in to see the doctor and she would say, "Oh no, she's just because she got her tonsils and adenoids out. She's just breathing more now, so she's not used to it. So that's why she coughs excessively. Okay. Yeah. And those kind of things. So I was kind of like, okay, maybe I'm reading into this and being a paranoid mother. Yeah. But then in the back of my mind, I'm like, no, there's some like this isn't right. So as she was getting more ticks and more things that she was doing and the obsessive compulsive disorder was very predominant i mean i'm talking a child that was doing homework and half an hour work, worth of homework would take her three hours and she'd oh, be yeah. erasing and erasing and erasing oh, yes. and erasing <laughs> because it wasn't looking just right and yes. she wasn't happy with it yes um punching herself in the head because she was getting so frustrated uh-huh. and i'm like hey this is not normal so I finally got a referral to um, a doctor, a pediatrician, uh, Dr. Jackowitz in Niagara Falls. Yes. And she was fantastic. I filled out a questionnaire, Yeah. brought it in, and she says, well, the way that you filled this out, she doesn't have Tourette's, and I can clearly see that she does. Let's go through this checklist again. So we went back through it again, and I was obviously downplaying stuff because I'm trying to be an optimistic right. mom, right? Yes. And downplaying a lot of it. <laughs> and um, yeah, and... We just went from there. She gave her the diagnosis and then the medication whirlwind. Right, the roller coaster of medications. Yes. Um, and then she decided to refer us to the Tretz Clinic in um, Toronto Western Hospital. We talked a little bit about um, the fact that you're um, a mental health professional. And it's really one thing that uh, my husband, as a mental health professional, when we first started this journey with our children, I, I thought, well, this will be good because, you know, He's actually, he's, he's got some people that he can talk to. I don't know if it's always been that way for us. And I'm wondering if it's been beneficial to you. Have you been able to know the right people to talk to and the right organizations to assist you? Has that been easier? I think I've mainly worked in, with the adult population, so not so much with the children. And we really only have one go-to place and. Um, I didn't find them very helpful locally mm-hmm. um, for children's mental health. Um, 
I mean, I went in, brought Stephanie for counseling sessions um, that she reluctantly didn't want to go. And um, I mean, beyond getting the diagnosis, going to the Tretz clinic, getting the medication, that was pretty much it. I don't think my job really opened up any doors of, uh, you know, a special psychiatrist okay, or someone yeah. to see. Um, nothing like that. And um, I just kind of did the wait list thing and got her in when I, and they weren't very helpful. Yeah. Um, the groups that they had there, it just happened that my daughter didn't fit in with like what I had going on with her and her various diagnoses didn't fit the other people in the groups that I would go to oh, or okay. their kids were little. Um, and I, you know, I asked around, I, you know, researched and all of that. Yeah. Um, and I also didn't want to get into like a group thing that, it was all negative stuff. Like, I want to problem solve. Yes. You know, like, that's what I think what you're doing is yes. wonderful because, I mean, we're talking, we might make fun of things, you know, like, and, but it's about sharing and problem solving. It's not about sitting and complaining about your kids all the time yeah. either because that's not helpful either. We yeah. need to vent. We need to vent. We need to vent. Absolutely. And we need lots of breaks. Yeah. Um, because it's very draining parenting a child with mental health. You know, people it's a think, whole other it's not, ball game, don't isn't do it? This, yeah. You know? It's negotiating, it's problem solving, it's, you know, is this, um, are they tired? Is this hormonal Yes. Is this a behavior? Is this... Uh, a reaction this, to something yeah. else that's gone on? What, and it's... Is this normal for their age? Yes. You know, like you can't be, you know, over-dramatizing mm -hmm. everyday things that kids just do, right? So you're constantly running these things through your head yeah. when you're making decisions and you're problem solving and then you get to the meltdown and it's like okay next time what do i need to do differently <laughs> like you're always trying to and then you have an adhd child that's yeah. 10 steps ahead of you anyway I'm anyway <laughs> oh, way smarter than i'll ever be your yes. and stuff, yes. right? so you really have to think things through yeah. it's, it's not just straightforward parenting it totally and, is yeah. not and there's no book for it there's no book. There's no expect what to expect when you're expecting when you've got this situation going on, right. you know. Right. And like you say, you know, it's interesting because in the throes of the kids meltdowns um, and in turn, like maybe ours afterwards, you know, usually my meltdown comes probably 10 or 15 minutes after they're settled down. And I'm like, oh, you know, many, many crying episodes in bathrooms. <laughs> but it's when I step back and I tell whoever you know my siblings my mom sometimes my co-workers of situations that have gone on at home because i'm very vocal about it mm -hmm. i don't tell them some of the horror things that happen but sometimes when you retell those stories you actually get a good laugh at them because you really can't believe that that happened <laughs> i'm like i, I know have predicted that one yeah <laughs> i have no i don't know we just sat down and he picked up a fork and he lost his mind you know and it's when you sit down and you dissect it and i find that very therapeutic and it's when you can actually look at that and realize that it's as frustrating as it is to go through these parenting um, moments it's it's quite rewarding and they're funny you know, it's funny. You have to you, use humor. You have we to use, use it, it all the time. I think that's like one key piece. If you don't have your sense of humor with things, and we've laughed about things like after she's had meltdowns, and I'd be like, "Wow, that was like it was epic." That, yeah, like <laughs> you were right on point today, right? And then she would laugh about it. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, the sarcasm piece too. We're a very sarcastic family, and we that's what's too. got us through a lot of it as well too. So, and it's really what gets you through, not just as a family, but don't you find that that's what got has gotten you through um, dealing with questions? Maybe it's from educators or from friends when they bring up, "Well, this is what's going on," and I say, you know, like just last week, I had um, Matthew's teacher say, "Well, he's he send, tends to be spaced out," and I said, "No, no, no." He's just thinking. <laughs> He's just really thinking about that. Because honestly, there's not really any good answer to some of the questions that are posed to you. And you do have to be a little comical about it. Yeah. Because if you really wanted to tell them the truth, I don't think they're really ready to hear <laughs> some of it, right? It. <laughs> um, let us talk a little bit about your daughters now. You're, they're in their 20s. Uh, has has their mental health changed? Has it shifted? Are things evening out a little bit for everybody? Um, well, my youngest daughter, uh, Bailey, with mm -hmm. the caps, um, she's done quite well. And, I mean, she uses strategies and, and whatnot. So she has done fantastic. She's in college now. Uh, my oldest daughter... Um, we were wondering what the Tretz was going to look like 
what it, you know, you read stuff online. I take that all with a grain of salt because yes. you, you never, never know. search Dr. Google. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> um, so I was curious to see, but she did go in to get reevaluated by a psychiatrist, Dr. Santher. And he, um, she does have the panic uh, disorder still okay. and the anxiety. Yeah. Um, her Tourette's tics just come out when she's really tired mm-hmm. or really stressed. Mm-hmm. She's got a few things that she does, but for the most part, She's doing much better. I think she's gotten older because a big piece with the Tourette's is um, grounding themselves. They're very emotionally driven all the time and they have a hard time bringing them that emotion down. Yeah. Um, and as a mom, even though I work in mental health, trying to, oh, well, mindfulness and all that. Yes. And she's like, oh, that's a bunch of BS. Yeah. Like, I, <laughs> she's telling you, shut you're up, my mom, mom right? That's, that's it. But yeah. coming from the doctor, it was different. And she took that more to heart. So she was, re- and he told her, you have to stop. Or, Stop relying on your mom so much. Yeah. Um, because when she would get emotional and be freaking out, I was the person she called all the time. So every time I see her it's name draining. on my phone, I'm like, oh, my God, <laughs> I can't do this today. I just can't do it again. Right. Yes. And like before it was the school calling me. I'm like, oh, man, oh. what does she do now? Right. <laughs> How many times I ignore the school call? And be like, I'm just too busy to do it. I just can't. I, just, I can't do it right now. I just can't do that right now. And sometimes now. she just, I don't want to do it today. No, I don't want, exactly. I want a day off that I'm just not going to deal with it. Yeah, right? that's right. Yeah. Um, but uh, she's come a very, very far away. Like, I'm very proud of her. She's she's moved out, moved away, and living with her boyfriend up north. Um, Love and support and yeah. good guidance and humor. She's doing well, yeah. You know, fun times. It helps them. It's so, I have to tell you, it's, it's rewarding for me. And I kind of like... <gasps> breathe a little bit because when you're in the early stages of it I look and think oh oh dear (laughs) what is this going to turn out like you know so it is nice to see that it it can it can work itself out and gets better and they'll find their way they'll find their way you know with all their struggles they'll still find their way Jody, I want to thank you so much for being so open and for joining me today for my first episode. I hope that you'll come back maybe down the road sometime. Perfect. Thank you so much. Jody Ricci joining us uh, here today on Giant TV for Mommy Meltdown.